Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing today? Wow, April. And we have some sunshine. This is amazing. Um, yeah, we've had a good few months of pretty rubbish weather. I'd say since about December, I've been moaning about it. And we've, uh, well, we've still got pretty rubbish weather. The wind is howling, but at least we've got a little bit of sunshine. So the plants that are out in the greenhouse, and yeah, they're all out in the greenhouse, they are doing quite nicely. Uh, yeah, big happy birthday to Mrs. Chili Chump. And we also have a few other birthdays. So Mrs. Chili Chump, Thank happy you. birthday. <laughs> um, we had a few others today. April seems to be quite a big one. It's actually uh, my brother-in-law Andre's birthday as well. So the, the chap that you would have seen on our Wings Eating Evenings, it's his birthday soon. So happy birthday, Andre. That's on the 13th lucky 13 uh isati and sean t as well you guys uh, had your birthdays recently and i believe tomorrow it's tom j not that i'm trying to do a, a birthday themed thing here but uh, we have quite a few this month so happy birthday to you all and anybody else that's having a birthday um now or in the very near future happy birthday to you all Kelly Woodruff, yeah, blooming windy. So Kelly lives fairly near to where I am. Uh, the wind today is just, it's crazy. But the good news is, I believe uh, the storm that's, that's here at the moment is meant to be bringing in some warmer weather, and it really has. We've got about 19 degrees Celsius. Um, oh, we've got to show, <laughs> we've got to show our, our uh, let's see if we can get him in here. Yeah. I don't know. There's, Miss, there's uh, <laughs> Barney, got himself a... Uh, a <laughs> new little decoration. I had to show that to you guys. <laughs> I'm showing you on this camera. I know, but my mic's in the way because I was trying to let him out. You're all right. Yeah, Bonnie. Uh, say hi Bonnie's bye. a bit unsure about this. Say hi and bye, Bonnie. <laughs> hi and bye. Anyway. Um, yeah, he's off now. He's, he sits in the windowsill. When, whenever there's a bit of sunshine on the windowsill, he's out there. So... Uh, yeah, guys, if you want to leave some questions or if you have some questions for me, uh, also, if you have some questions for John, our special guest who will be coming on in a few minutes time, uh, then feel free to leave the questions there with exclamation mark Q and then space and then whatever question you have. And uh, if it is for John, just make it clear it's for John, uh, ATX hot sauce. And uh, I'll, I'll address those to him when we have him on. But yeah, we have a special guest. That's really cool. We've been trying to organize this for quite a while now. I've actually had uh, a couple of boxes. I have two of these boxes from John. It must have been, what, six months ago? Oh, and the rest. Yeah, okay. uh, it must have been about six months ago that he sent them to me. And uh, there's a whole bunch of sources in there for me to try. But I didn't want to try it until we managed to get him on a live stream. So we'll be trying those as well in just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Chili Chump rocking the merch. I should be wearing my, I need, I need a Chili Chump Hoodie. jumper. Are oh, you not cold? No, I'm okay at the moment. I feel cold. I don't know. I think it's being out in the sun, up in the greenhouse, enjoying the sunny weather. But yeah. So how's everyone else doing? I, I'm guessing not a lot of you have put your plants out in the greenhouse. I would have held off a little bit doing that, but yeah, it was just getting a bit rammed inside the potting shed. And I was also starting to have some serious problems with aphids and if I left them in there, they would have just got ruined. So I had to take them out to the greenhouse. I have got some frost protection in there, but I haven't actually had to need it. The temperatures haven't dropped below, much below about 9 degrees, 10 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, they're doing all right at the moment. And especially when we do have some sunshine like we have had the last couple of days. So they are doing fantastic. They're growing really well. Different gear TV. Is anyone else getting audio sync, audio out of sync? Hey, Grosh, good to see you on. And you've got your Chili Chump t-shirt on. I have got a Chili Chump t-shirt, but it's underneath the top because I'm a little bit chilly today. Uh, anybody else have problems with audio? Hey, Don Panamaniac. I can always adjust it. I did test it before the stream, and it looked like it was all right. But I'm happy to adjust if needs be. And I am a little thirsty. So it's a bit of a sad day. Not, not chili related this, but... We're in a, quite a small village where we live, where we've moved to about three years ago, and we've tried to uh, settle into village life and get involved with the local stuff and things like our local pub. We've really enjoyed it. It's a 
quirky little place which we call Pete's. Uh, I don't. What is it actually called? The the Red Lion? No, no. Uh, the White Horse, I think it is. The White Horse, yeah. Uh, but we had some bad news. So Pete is a bit of an eccentric chap, lovely guy. Unfortunately, he's not very well, and he is having to close his pub down. We found this out last week, and that means that the only pub in, well, pretty much two villages that are nearby us is now gone. Uh, as of tomorrow, I believe the pub is permanently shutting down, and I don't think anybody's taking it over. So, yeah, it's pretty sad, and obviously very sad that Pete is not well. It's not going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little different, uh, not being able to go down on a Friday and uh, enjoy a, a pint with Pete, oftentimes singing to us behind mm -hmm. the bar. <laughs> but uh, today I'm enjoying another brew dog, and still, brew dog have not sent me a glass. I'm still using this old thing. Come on, brew dog. <laughs> I have seen a few of you guys on Twitter or X, what do you want to call it today, um, mention <laughs> adding uh, Brewdog and asking them to send me a glass. But uh, yep, they haven't got in contact yet. Oh well. Cheers, everybody. Chris Evans, I don't need any more business opportunities. Thank you. I'm busy enough as it is. Uh, I, although we did discuss it, our neighbor that we go down there with, uh, to the, to the pub, when we found out that it was going to get shut down, they didn't have a buyer for it. We were like, Hmm, there's an idea. And then we realized we'd probably be dead within six months if we had to do that. Uh, so yeah, we'd rather not do that. Ryan, um, Ate your first ripe CC jalapenos this week. The flavor and heat were great. They seem very small compared to the jalapenos I'm used to. Yeah. Uh, they're meant to be large, actually, and that's what I bred them for. They are particularly large, but they, that can really be impacted by nutrients in the soil. If you've got too much nitrogen, that can really impact it. Um, when, I, when people do complain about smaller chilies that they're growing, all I can suggest is drop the amount of nitrogen that you're putting in there and uh phosphorus and potassium particularly potassium a little bit more of that and it should increase the size of those chilies oh all right um jason land well i know, I know that's a question for the question sheet but um he just mentioned about rob from seven park club announcing he's slowing down his content yeah, um, I've seen that. He, he did actually mention that a few times on his um, on his Facebook page and I think Instagram. And uh, Rob Rob's a lovely guy. I speak to him quite often. Uh, he has been on the live stream as well before. And yeah, he, <laughs> the guy works hard. I mean, he's not just doing the chili content. He's doing a lot of other things as well. And yeah, he deserves a break. the The whole running a YouTube channel. I, I'm, I'm not gonna moan about it. I love doing it. But it's a lot more work than I think people realize. And especially the way Rob does it. I mean, Rob puts a ton of effort, especially around the audio side, because he's an audio engineer, I believe, um, by trade. And he does a lot of work there, obviously, with his songs that he does. Uh, but he always he always puts a ton of effort into every one of his videos. They're very well scripted. Um, the, the videography is really good. And he spends tons and tons of time. So I can imagine putting out a video a week with that sort of overhead that's got to be tough. So yeah, Rob, well deserved break, but I'm sure we're going to see more of him. I'm sure there's going to be a few more songs in the pipeline from Seven Pot Rob. Uh, Kelly, yeah, he's shutting down the pub. Um, he, he, what was it? So basically, he didn't. He, the the pub has remained independent. If, if for the guys that that don't live in the UK. Uh, a lot of the pubs, the old school pubs that you might have seen on TV, you know, the lovely little village pubs, they kind of got bought out, a lot of them, by big franchises. Um, what would you call it? It's franchise, right? Um, so breweries, brewery a brewery yeah. would own the pub, and that means they only, they only have beers from specific breweries or specific drinks, and they have to go through a whole lot of changes internally and all that sort of thing, and it loses the personal touch, I think, a lot of the time. And people that run those pubs, they tend to be just landlords rather than actually owners of the business. And Peter's independent. He doesn't have a he doesn't have a 
uh, any, anybody telling him what to do or what beers he can serve or how his pub is designed or what he can do. I mean, he had a free pool table there, which we always went and played. The deco inside was pretty much straight out the 80s, <laughs> but it had its charm and that was awesome. And I think he doesn't want to ruin that. He doesn't want it to be taken over by someone that's going to, you know, modernize it too much or, you know, sell out to a brewery. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's basically the deal. Rian Bailey, hi from South Africa. Hello to you, my friend. Same sort of time zone as us. I know a lot of the Americans, uh, they battle because it's like morning time or 11 a.m., 12 p.m., and they can't exactly have a beer just yet. Well, they can if they want, but <laughs> cheers anyway. <laughs> oh, So, yeah, in the next five minutes, we'll bring on our special guest, John from ATX Hot Sauce. I'm sure a lot of you guys know who he is. Um, he's been a patron of mine for a very long time as well, and uh, I'm very thankful for that. So thank you, John. Well, I'm sure I'll thank him as well on the on the chat. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to actually kick off a giveaway because I have been bottling. Oh, I don't know, canning. What do you call it? <laughs> I've been filling Filet. lots of lots of tubs <laughs> with my yummy salt. So yummy salt is going to be back in the store. I'm going to make that go live probably tomorrow morning. And uh, the, the, obviously, I've, I get asked about this for a, a, a lot of the time. I get so many emails about the Yummy Salt because it's a favorite of a lot of people. But it'll be back in the store, like I said, probably tomorrow. Uh, I've upped the amount of the Yummy side of it, so the chili side of it. So uh, the ratio, it's a little bit less salt compared to the, the actual chili mash that I'm using. So you get a lot more flavor, a little bit less salt. I just, I keep fiddling with that ratio and I keep trying to bring more value, obviously, to you guys. And uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. But that'll be in the shop tomorrow. But we're going to be giving away two of these bottles today during the live stream. And I'm going to kick that off in a little bit. You only need to enter once and I will do the draw twice. So enter once. That's it. Just don't want to get the chat full with entering multiple times. So here we go. And that'll close in about 35 minutes, which we just after I finished talking with John. There we go. So it's exclamation mark, gimme, G-I-M-M-E, and uh, that'll get you entered in. No, Kelly, it's not Perry Perry Cherry yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm waiting for my supplier to source me some more cherries. We'll be getting that done. I don't know when. He hasn't actually come back to me. I did check on him last time. He moaned at me for not having the Peri Peri Cherry. Um, yeah, and there will be also a couple other sources going in, not next week, but probably the week after. Because um, uh, I've started actually using the kitchen properly now. Obviously, I've rebuilt my entire um, commercial kitchen, and it's working out great. The machine, I really need to figure out how I do this. I'll show you guys how I'm bottling these things now. I have a new machine that helps me with it, so it makes it more precise and far less mess and a lot easier. So yeah, that's very cool. But also with the bottling of the sauce, I now have two machines and a bit of a conveyor belt and stuff that I'm, I need to still set up. But once that's up and running, it'll be a lot easier for me to get those sauces bottled. Okay, I am going to switch over. We're going to just bring John into the conversation. So just give me one second and hope this works. Um, I'm going to have to put on headphones because it will... So I can hear. <laughs> Let me switch over to headphones and let us get this going. Oh, I can't see John on the chat yet. I'll stick to main for now. Maybe he's having problems. No, he's not having problems. He's checking the phone. While we are waiting, uh, while we're waiting for him to connect, I have. Have I kicked it off? Oh, there I've got John. I am going to uh, bring him into the chat. So here we go, guys. John, can you hear me? Oh, I'm doing well. Oh, loving the, loving the set. It's great to see you again. Let me bring that down. Are you? In, is this this is your kitchen where you do your videos? John's very low. <laughs> Okay. Um, guys is telling me that uh, your volume is low. I don't think it's you. So let me just see if I can get you increased here. 
<sighs> it's always interesting. I got the volume up, up on full. I don't know. Um, I can hear you fine. Gotta love technology. Now they're saying no audio. Hold on one second. Seriously. Uh, let me check here. Got the right mics on. Okay. Yeah. Are people actually here now, guys? Is that good? No. Hello, testing one, two, three from Austin, Texas, the eclipse capital of the world right now. <laughs> It's showing the output. Yes. Okay. Now we can hear. Yes. Very right. strange, but at least it's working again. <laughs> I really need to change my streaming software. I, I was I was just telling John. <laughs> just one more uh, thing for the guys. The well, I was, I was telling John um, when we were doing a setup that uh, well, I was telling you you should do some live streaming because it's nice and easy and simple. But yeah. Then you have these problems. <laughs> yeah. You so anyway, problems. you know, you you brought up something a few minutes ago. People get a little burned out, you know, on these YouTubes, and that's one of the things that I've been running into a little bit lately. You know, you run through 40, 50, 60 videos that you're making for YouTube, and you're trying to put them out on a, a constant basis. And uh, sometimes you get writer's block, and you just like, I don't, I don't know what to do next. I, I well, I, I kind of get that. I saw I, I get a mix of things, and and that's obviously it's one of the things I want to talk to you about because you, you're in the same sort of niche as me, and I. I find one of the more difficult videos for me to do is actually the the cooking videos, the sauce videos, because those are the ones I'm most passionate about, and I want to get yeah. them perfect. And whenever you have that word "perfect" come along in your brain when you're doing videos, that's not a good thing because it can never be perfect, but you're always trying to. Um, and what I find it's it's not for me it's not writer's block. It's it's literally it's just getting that motivation, knowing that. I've got five, six hours of filming. I've got probably 10, and 20, 10 to 20 hours of prep. Then I've got the filming. Then I've got the editing. I've got to think about how I'm going to process that all through, especially when you're doing fermented, fermented sources. I always yeah. split it up. I do the initial part, setting up the fermentation, and then I come back to it two, three months later, and I will then process the source and then film that as well. So it's keeping track. That's of why you got to take notes on everything, right? I've, I've got so many notes. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, when, when we make small mistakes in our videos, our subscribers are the first ones to point them out to us, which we appreciate very, very much. I'm like, how did oh, I miss absolutely. that? So you look at a video 50,000 times and you're putting it together and you things just get passed over. It's it's a tough one. It's you know I've I've made I've made quite a few mistakes uh, on my videos and yeah you're right you do get them pointed out to you very quickly, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can't get it right every single time it, it's it it can be a bit tough you know and it's it could be it could be a, a spelling error on a you know on something that you, an ingredient you put up on the screen or something like that simple things like that but oh man then it's it just comes back to bite you because the comments just go nuts with that forget all the rest of the video but that that three seconds that you messed up <laughs> that'll be the focus that's the one that counts so what got you started with with youtube um, well, I'm guessing well, guessing the sauce came before YouTube. Yeah, so I've always made hot sauce and, and salsas and things like that. Um, I've always been a, a, a big cook. Uh, back in a previous life, I, I worked in commercial kitchens and restaurants. Um, that was a long time ago. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the sauce thing came, I hate to even say this, this is a little bit embarrassing. I kind of have a man crush on you, Sean. <laughs> uh, 2019, uh, about midway through. So I'll back up a little bit here in Texas, there's a thing called the cottage industry. And as long as your sales are below $50,000 a month, uh, $50,000 a year, you can actually make a lot of baked home goods in, in your house. One of the foods that was illegal though, under the cottage industry was acidified foods and the Texas legislature in their ultimate wisdom back in 2018 passed a bill that said that you can now do acidified sauces or pickles or things like that and still be under the cottage industry which means you don't have to have a huge commercial kitchen if your sales are less than fifty thousand dollars a year and so when i passed that law i went out and i'm like wow that's there's a lot of people going to get into this so i you know I, I researched and came up with a couple of different names finally lit on atx hot sauce uh, atx is austin texas uh if you live in texas and you know that atx it's kind of a big uh, big uh, deal here and i was surprised to actually to get the website on the atx hot, hot sauce.com 
Um, but I started going on YouTube and I was looking for, um, for some hit tips and hints and tricks uh, and some inspiration from somebody. And Sean, I, I ran into your website and to your <laughs> channel. And so since about 2019, I've been watching a lot of your videos and uh, you, uh, you took me, I think I was at an expert level and you took me beyond that expert level uh, on all your videos, which I really much appreciated. I, I actually didn't know that, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you've been a patron for a long time. I was just saying to my viewers yeah. before you came on, and I, thank you so much for supporting me. And if other people want to join up, uh, patron.com forward slash chili chump. But yeah, you've been a patron for a long time. And I, that's one of the reasons that I we kind of reached out. I mean, we've spoken a few times trying to get this hooked up. And it's because I keep seeing your name on there. I love watching your videos. My viewers love watching your stuff as well. There's There's... Every live stream, there's a comment about, "Hey, I love I the ATX hot sauce guy. You should have him oh, on." That's great. So, yeah. Was, yep. wow. So you know, then, then after 2019, you know, at the beginning of 2020, what happened? Right, the mm. world changed as we know it. And in my other career, where I actually make money, um, it's a very chaotic business. And so, in my business, uh, my main job, it can be 30 minutes of pure chaos followed by 30 minutes of sheer boredom. And when you're in an office building somewhere, you just walk around to your team, you talk to people, you're mentoring, you're teaching, you're training. Uh, well, when everybody went home, that 30 minutes turned into, well, I've already done the laundry. Uh, now what do I do? And so I really delved in and really started uh, started my YouTube channel back in 2019. Uh, uh, clarified a lot of our different uh, uh, in ingredients that we use and some of the different flavors that we sell now. We have 12 different flavors we sell on our website. Um, but that 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 time that time at home allowed me to really hunker down mentally, right, and uh, focus on on the business, it's not just my main business, which I could still do from home, but also in the hot sauce business, where I have a huge passion for it, and uh, I love I love fermented hot sauce instead of cooked hot hot sauces. Um, they are, um, I think, it brings out all the best in a hot sauce, all the flavors, uh, hundred hundred percent agree, everything, yeah, hundred yeah. percent agree. Uh, but fermented hot sauce, it just for me, I, I, the way I describe it, it's the best way I can describe it. It takes away the green taste of chilies. It makes it, yeah. it, it just brings the flavors out uh, without having that kind of green taste. It, it's so difficult yeah. to explain. And once you've had a good fermented hot sauce, then you'll tell the difference. Especially, there's a lot of people still making fresh ferment, uh, fresh hot sauce without fermenting, uh, especially when you're not cooking it as well. It just tastes very, very different. Sometimes it's good, like a good verde lovely uh some some green jalapeno sauces i, I kind of like uh, there's a mauritian one mazabaru that tastes fantastic nice and fresh but it needs to be using the green chilies but yeah. for the majority for me especially the hotter sauces you know that to be honest capsicum chinens is not the best tasting types of chilies until you start fermenting it then you can get some of those unique flavors coming through and you yeah. lose some of that floral kind of flavor. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, agree Carolina there. Reapers fermented the same stuff. way. It's, it's a little astringent if it's not fermented. I think. Mm. Um, and I, I like to actually. I think that once you get past that and the heat on a Carolina Reaper, there is some flavor on the back end. I think that uh, fermentation brings out. And I do my fermentations a little bit different than you do yours. You do a mash, and we do a brine for ours. I, I do a mix. Um, I don't always do mash. Mash. It's quite a few of my sources are mash. Uh, just because when when I'm doing larger fermentations, a mash is a lot simpler to work with than yeah. a brine fermentation. Um, I mix it up. I, the only one that I don't do for my commercial sources is vacuum seal. Uh, I think that works well for my experimental when I'm experimenting with small mm -hmm. batches because it's pretty foolproof. But you try and do 30 liters or 30 kilograms of chilies in a vacuum seal, it's just not going to work <laughs> and you don't need to because it's going to be such an active fermentation if you're using nice fresh chilies that you're not going to have problems with calm yeast or anything like that the calm yeah. yeast issues happen with chilies that aren't fully ripe and people that are trying to ferment small very small amounts like in tiny jars it's just not yeah. enough activity so other things can kind of take over yeah we do six but, gallon uh, bucket large buckets for our fermentations okay is that is that like across the board? That's all your all your sources done like that? Yeah, you know, if for some of the staff, I have to have everything a little bit more. Uh, you know, at home, I obviously I, I do a lot of fermentation experiments at home, and and I have these books that I I meticulously meticulously take notes on for every every ferment I do because I could have six or seven going at one time experiments, and you don't remember if you added X amount of what pepper here or what spice in this one, especially if it was two or three months ago. It just leaves your brain. 
So, you know, I've got all these fermentations going around. And, and I usually you do those in gallon jars or I do the uh, vacuum seal, uh, which, yeah. is, which tends to work real well. I still think the jars, for me, work a little bit better. Um, you just you can maintain that. Uh, you know, put the airlock system on there. You don't have to really do a lot as long as you have a good uh, salt ratio in there. A hundred percent. I I find it tough sometimes. I have to remember, obviously, that not everyone has been doing this a long time. But you know, I get a lot of people messaging me asking. You know, they send me a picture and their their source is very obviously ruined. It's gone off or it's got green lines running through it and stuff like that. And, and I'm like, often wonder, okay? does this look like mold? I'm like, yes, that's mold. <laughs> this... You need to throw that out. <laughs> yeah. It smells terrible and looks awful. Do you think I can and still the pH eat it? Is 8.2. No. Is that is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's bad. But I, I don't have failures with my mashes. And I, I mean, I, I, I had to purposely, I, I, I did a video where I was showing you know, what happens. What does, a, what does a bad fermentation look like? I had to actively try and ruin fermentations. And the funny thing is some of the ones that I tried to ruin still were successful where yeah. I put too little salt in or I had left way too much of an air gap. It still was successful. You know, I mean, that's why really humans have been up. using the for 10, 12,000 years have been uh, doing fermentations. I mean, you're drinking one right now. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what got me into. That's what got me into fermenting chilies is I was brewing beer. Uh, I was enjoying that whole process. I love the the scientific side of it. I love experimenting. I was coming up with my own little recipes and that. And then I realized, wait, there's a whole new world opening up here. And I started playing around with fermentations, but incorporating the same processes that I was following with the brewing, the home brewing. Because what I find is home brewing with beers and that, the the whole thinking behind that is always about cleanliness, sterilization, making sure everything is perfect, uh, using airlocks. That wasn't a thing when i started out everybody was using muslin bags with a bit of an elastic around it and you know just Hoping not, not doing it. yeah exactly and and nine times out of ten you probably would be just fine but if you want 10 out of 10 then there's a few things you need to do and yeah. that's the thing I, I just followed those processes from the beginning i didn't listen to some of the silly stuff that you see on youtube sometimes yeah I fermented for a week in the fridge i was like what <laughs> that's not no, fermenting. that doesn't work you know, I, no. I think I think a good like it, it depends on the pepper and whatever other ingredients are in there. But I do believe that longer fermentations give it a, a, a better flavor profile and lets the other fruits and vegetables that you have in there to really to make their mark on the sauce. Whatever, be it in the first three or four seconds or five seconds or ten seconds into it. And I mean, we have a we have one of our hot sauces. It's called Honey Be Hot, and we take garlic and we ferment it in honey for two months. And then we, on the side, we do fermented habaneros for two months, and then we combine that at the end. And so you get this hot sauce that has this real sweet garlic taste with like the first five seconds, six seconds. Then literally about second eight to ten, you get that real smoky jalapeno, uh, habanero coming up in the background. I mean, it's good for like shrimp or chicken or pineapple pizza if you're into that. <laughs> But it's that one sounds of my favorite ones. Amazing. Is is it one of the sauces you've given me? Uh it's called or is it a new one? I, No, it's in yeah, there. It no. is. All right. Mrs. Chili Chump says there is uh there is one There's in here. Honey honey in there. Yeast, non -extract. I think uh, drinking purposes. Sorry, we just had a, a donation come through, I think is a question for you as well. What's your hottest uh where is that question now? It's just disappeared. Uh what's your hottest non extract sources for drinking purposes? For drinking I'm guessing, purposes. <laughs> I don't think for drinking. I'm guessing. Uh, so we don't put any extract in any of our stuff. We use fresh fruits and vegetables for to stop, stop to finish. Uh, probably the hottest one we have is the fire in the hole. Um, it is amalgamation of different peppers, Carolina Reapers, Scotch Bonnets, uh, Red Fresnos. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty high on the heat level there. It's got some uh, dry chipotle peppers that we also put in there. That looks like the Texas Reaper you have there in your hand. Yeah, is that hotter than the Texas Reaper? The Fire in the Hole is hotter than the Texas Reaper. Our Texas Reaper won uh, second place last summer in the Fiery Foods competition in Dallas uh, under the spicy category. I, it's not a blow your head off uh, Carolina Reaper, which most people think it might be. Now, my my um, my taste buds may be a little jaded, as yours are too, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but, well, I have you know, my moments still. <laughs> Yeah, I, and that blue habanero you have in your hand, basically that blue habanero, all it is is, is blueberries, habaneros, and uh, ancho chilies. So, and so which one, 
which well i mean we've got to ask, answer the question here um well firstly what, what is your favorite sauce that you make what, what's the hottest sauce you make you said it it's not the reaper one right it's the fire in the hole fire in the hole that's probably I, the I hottest don't, one I don't think my I have favorite one is the smoked five pepper uh smoked habanero five pepper uh that's that's probably my go-to on a daily basis and my wife loves the big green which is a really uh, uh mild uh, green sauce i love your labeling by the way it's very similar to the ethos that we have as well which yeah. is brand up front because I, I my wife hates me doing this because she's the designer when it comes to our labels and I'll see, I'll see an awesome label of somebody else's hot sauce or one that I really enjoy using. And I'm like, oh, we can do that. And she's like, no, it's against our brand guidelines. <laughs> yeah, you got so to like, leave with okay. your branding and then put the sauce on there. And, you know, I, I do appreciate the guys that put the skull and crossbones and the... Uh, oh, no, the, I love it. It's, the, 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 yeah. you know, the, a, a wraith or something on there or a ghost. But, uh, you know, I, I, we, we definitely stick to our brand for sure. So I've got eight beautiful hot sauces in front of me uh we've got the honeybee hot the big red texas reaper red ghost black pepper blue habanero uh the smoked habanero five pepper and the juice which anybody wants to buy i'm sure they're available on your website or are you they are stock? at <laughs> there you go um so which which one should one. i try and which one should uh, mrs chili chum try because she's not i've got mine oh she has uh, which one which big one red do you have yes yeah, that's a she that's said much the, mild. That's made, <laughs> that's made with the red Fresnos. So I think it's okay. very mild. Sauce. So she it's could deal with that. Good time. Yeah, she could deal with that. Or the green, if I sent you a green <laughs> one, too. I, I, I think we should start with the Honey Bee Hot, Sean. Okay. The Honey Bee Hot. Take we'll it. have to give that a go. Yeah, so our, um, with the fermentation process, uh, Texas A&M University is real close to Austin, and they did all of our testing for our shelf stability, which oh, is okay. 18 to 24 months. As you, as you know, that they can probably go yep. longer. You know, one of the big I, questions I, I do, I do 12 family. months, you I do 12, 12 months, but you know that, I mean, I've got sources in my fridge where I, I, I bought a, I bought a microscope for this purpose. I keep checking them in one year increments. I've got six year old sources that are still perfectly fine. No activity. And if you want but, a pH, and now I do think I, I've had a five year old ferment, uh, that I've had, which it got a little funky. It was still a real low pH, but uh, it, was, it was a little funk, a little funky. Yeah. I've had some as well like that, but I know the ones that are going to last. I know, it depends, again, it's the pH, the starting pH, because what you will notice, if you test the pH, the pH will often rise again slowly. Not a lot, but if you're starting at, let's say, a 4.1, which I don't. I mean, most of mine are starting at about 3.6. But if you're starting at 4.1, which is still in the safe range, according to you know CDC and all the rest, yeah, the fact is it just needs to rise one or two you know base points, and you're getting very close to the dangerous. And yeah, also, we're, it's we're, allowing we're, other we're pathogens. We're three point two and three point six when we're when we're uh, when we're uh, pasteurizing our, our sauce. We test it, and it's you know I've seen as low as as three, but I think that might have been an anomaly with our pH meter. And, and, so and as, I don't know about you, but I go through it many pH meters on a day, on a weekly, on a monthly basis. I, I tend to wear out very quickly. <laughs> I I've, I am going to have to get another one for this season. Um, I love my Epira. I have an Epira, which has held. It's 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 been amazing. It's been the best one I've had. It's lasted two years, as long as you keep it stored away properly and yeah, calibrated yeah. and that. But I do want one that I can replace the head. I think that'll be the ideal situation. The thing is, to me, it's cheap in consideration of what I'm trying to achieve. Right, I want safe sources. So yeah. It's cheap in the long in the long in the scheme in the grand scheme of things i think so i'm going to do a, a quick source review here of your honeybee hot sure and then i'm sure you've got a hotter one for me that i'm going to be trying i'll say straight up the first thing i smell here is garlic strong yeah that is awesome but it, it smells it's weird it's like it's like your fresh garlic like when you're um if, if you're frying up some fresh garlic like straight up in the uh when you're making a bolognese or something like that and you're frying up some garlic with onions it's that sort of yeah strength yeah. but then uh, and, and, and like my family sweetness, garlic garlic is a um an ingredient that goes in everything in our with our family oh, I, I, same here I, I love 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 garlic so i tend to go overboard garlic sometimes okay so th this is the one that's it's honey yeah, yeah it's the garlic fermented inside so we use honey as the fermentation liquid uh, which is probably one of the original first uh, uh, fermenting solutions out there. Wow. 
that is that's awesome it's it's that sweetness up front you get that hit of garlic the, the garlic is not as strong when you're actually tasting it it's still there but it's not as it's not as um it's not as apparent as the smell is um then the sweetness and then the heat slowly rolls in it's not like it kicks you right but it's all around the the sides of the tongue yeah, it's, I, it, I, for me, it's about eight seconds to, to nine seconds for that heat, actually, because that way you can actually ch- taste we'll the rest of stuff. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make her have the the the, the less heat <laughs> one. Um, yeah, is that the big first, red? and then she That's can try hot. this one. Why is that hot? It, no, no, it's not hot, but it does build, and then you won't really be able to tell what sort of heat level that is. My, one of my most recent videos is I had two of my kids come into the house, my older kids, and uh, we tasted all 12 of our flavors at one time. And let's just put it, the, the kids were, were struggling towards the end. <laughs> As you know, when you taste hot sauce, it builds and builds and builds. So you can actually have a, a mild one at the end, and it's gonna, it just brings everything out. But that heat's still there. It's still the same. It's, it hasn't, it's not building, but it's staying. It's, like it's, made, it's actually quite weird, but it's staying at that same level just it's maintaining it's not going away quickly like with peri peris the my favorite yeah. chili those they hit you quick and then they slowly you know they'll they'll fade away and uh, this isn't doing that it's maintaining the heat very nicely so mrs chili chump's gonna give hers a try it smells lovely yep let me have a yeah we we use beets red beets for color on that one Work and out what uh, i can smell and a so, little bit of sweetness with the beets, and we use Fresno I love peppers. Beetroot, which is nice to see in there. Is there tomato in this? No, no tomato, no, no, no tomato. Yep. Well, Mrs. Chili Champ's going to give it a try. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind on the audio, so that's fine. Um, and forgive me because Chili Champ is a lot better at describing the flavors than I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is and still hot. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> that's a nice heat. Is that a good heat? Yeah, I, I well, can you... see why that one is quite nice on pizza. Is that one? You can give that. I don't know why I'm smelling. <clears throat> no tomato. We don't. We don't have any tomato. Uh, we do have. We have a hatch chili that we put out about once a year when we can get hatch chilies. Oh, it was the honey um, and that one has hot. tomatoes in the fermentation. The but okay. other, none of our other ones do. I. I am growing a, a ton of tomatoes this year um, that I've got an idea for a sauce, but more, not not really a, a hot sauce. This is going to be a hot ketchup type thing, like you might have yeah. seen on my channel. Yeah. Um, some ideas I have there for a fermented ketchup. You might need some water after that. You want to give that a try? <laughs> <laughs> Go. You know, well, it, now that you've still got that <laughs> garlic thing going, garlic. going on, Sean, um, do you, did I send you one of the black peppers? I haven't got that. That's been one of my best sellers. The the black garlic. Is that what you mean? No. So uh, wow, we do uh, wine onions, tons of garlic, <laughs> just hits uh, the habaneros, <laughs> and uh, black peppercorns. Um, uh, I have, not there's one garlic. with black peppercorns. Black pepper. This. Yeah, that's that's like if you it, I, you don't need to try that one out. But if you do have a hamburger or any kind of meat in the next couple of days, put that on there. It's really good. Yeah, but the. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How's the heat? It's okay. There's no heat whatsoever when you compare it. Uh, I'm sure there's not heat that, in the, yeah, uh, that's a, uh, the big see, red. We see we have our uh, our heat meter on the side there next to our uh, our spokesman. That's Ar- Arnie the Armadillo. Uh, uh, she's our little mascot. He has his own uh, X channel too. So in, in awesome. Austin, Texas, the Armadillo has been a big. Uh, symbol for austin texas for many 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 years just because we have so many around they're like they're uh if you're gonna see you see them a lot on the sides of rose unfortunately they're like kind of like the badger in in the uk i don't think i've ever seen a live badger they're always dead on the side of the road yeah and and uh, and armadillos what happens when you drive over one their their safety mechanism is to jump straight up in the air which is yeah. if you're under a car going 50 miles an hour, that's probably not a good idea. No, that's not ideal. So I'm going to give you a question here. Another question has come through from David okay. F. Um, he's asked for both of us, but I'm going to start opening. Um, I'm guessing Texas Reaper is the hottest one you have here. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Try it out. <laughs> um, so David F. asks if I want to use lemon juice instead of vinegar in my sauces. And given that the pH is under four, will my sauce be shelf stable and how long will it last? Thanks. 
I, I don't think the vinegar, if you're fermenting, it's the fermentation process that's going to give you good shelf stability, right? I mean, yep. for us, we're in a cook sauce, I understand why they have to add so much vinegar to it. But for us, the fermentation process is why it gives it shelf stability. And then we do vinegar just for flavor and not for shelf stability. I, I try and explain this. It's, you know, I'm sure you get this a lot in your, your comments and that as well. Um, where people are critiquing it, oh, it's just, that's just a vinegar sauce. I'm like, well, there's the style of sauce. So, of course, it's going right. to vinegar. And I'm not adding vinegar because, vinegar because I'm trying to make this last longer. It's already at a perfect pH. I don't need to add any vinegar right. to this. Um, I, and the way I explain, so my thoughts on the lemon juice thing, lemon juice, unfortunately, adds actually some sugars as well. So if you are adding lemon juice after the fact, that's a little bit different than adding vinegar especially if you're using fresh lemon juice, right? Because obviously bottled lemon juice has been pasteurized a lot of the time, so that's right. actually fairly safe. Um, but it's not down to the pH. That's more about what's going to go on with it after the fact. Now you've added that. It's a, Consider it the same way as adding any sort of fruit. You know, how would you process that sauce? You're probably going to have to heat process it, which I don't like doing, which is why I kind of avoid fruits in quite a few of my sauces unless I'm going to ferment it through with fruits. Um, yeah. I did see another question. Did it, was it another one? Yeah, and, and you know the last thing you want is for that pasture is for the for the uh, ferment, fermentation to restart on a bottle of hot sauce that you have in a cabinet because that can be a problem. I, I've had it happen a few times. I'm sure you have too. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah that's problematic, especially if you have the dripper insert and yeah. you've shaken it up, opened it up, and then you've just got a fountain. Yeah, and the I fountain of hot sauce is not a lot of fun. One of the first batches I ever did, uh, I gave a friend of mine a bottle of it, and it blew up in his pantry. Well, wow. he was not happy with me because <laughs> that's that takes some work to clean. Yes, yes, it does. I've, so, with uh, I don't know what you guys use to bottle. Are you bottling your own sauces? You, you're making them, bottling them yourselves, or using the start to finish? Yep, start to finish. So we have a bottling machine, but it's a hand bottling machine. So we just do each bottle individually. Um, okay. You know, it, it's, it takes a while, but, you know, I've got the, the guys, they, they like doing it, you know, and then you can just, you know, I've thought about doing a, uh, go into a place that can can it for me. I just, I don't know. I'm, I, just, I, 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 I like control and you lose control with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the way I see it. So there's, there's a couple of things. Going to a co-packer, firstly, is going to kill your profits. So you're going to have to increase the price of your sources or accept that you're going to be making you know, a quarter of what you were before, right? And as it is, this isn't a money spinner. It's not like we're making tons of money selling hot sauce. Um, you know, for us, it's, I keep, the reason I've automated a lot of what I do in terms of bottling, because I have two bottling machines now that are running off a compressor and it does speed it up quite a bit compared to the hand one. The reason for that is so that I could bring the prices down. It, it's not because I'm cranking out 10,000 bottles a day. That's not my that's not my objective here. I want right. to keep it in-house, and that means investing in a couple of those things. Going to a co-packer, you lose control of the ingredients. A lot of the time, the co-packers will change ingredients. If they're running out of one, they'll put something else. Or if, you, if you're giving them your whole source, that's a different story if you're giving them a barrel of your source. But a lot of the time that they are doing some stuff to the recipe, and I don't quite like that. I, I want to be in control of it. I yeah. also I think it, I think it adds something knowing that you've been involved in every one of your bottles. It's the same things, the same thing I want from my stuff. If people buying my sauce or my seeds or whatever, they know that that's been processed, grown. It's it's been yeah. it's your baby. labeled uh, you're, you're by my here, by me. You're tasting mine today. And I'm I'm nervous every time because that's like my baby when you're opening it up. And I, I I go, what if that batch didn't come out? I know I taste them all, but you know it's the uh, balance has been great so far. The balance I, I didn't mention that the first sauce that I had the uh, which one was that the big big red? No, not the big red. Uh, the honeybee heart. Um, honeybee heart. The balance perfect. The 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 heat, the sweetness, the salt is absolutely perfect. There's nothing dominating, which is fantastic. So I'm, now I'm going to try the uh, Texas Reaper. Is that that is using Carolina Reaper as the main? It is absolutely, and right? we get our Carolina Reapers from a, a local um, farm here in Austin, outside of Austin, in Wimberley, Texas, Hill Country Hot Peppers. The guys are absolutely phenomenal out there. It's not a, they have maybe an acre or two that they do, and um, limited supplies. And that's one of the things I like about the fermentation process too, making hot sauce, is that I can make hot sauce year round because you know one of these fermentations they'll go for three or four or five months. 
uh, and then you know I can make the sauce after that. And you know, there's a very small window to get Carolina Reapers into, uh, for us here in the states, unless you okay. want to buy the pre-done mashes and stuff, which I don't like to do. Mm, no, nah, I've I've tried them, I've tested them because uh, people keep asking me about it. Um, yeah, it's. I'd rather you just don't know you don't know what's in the there. and wait wait for the pressure stuff to come. Exactly, exactly. So we're going to give us a try. Um, so you you don't grow your own chilies then? I do not. I do not. I, I have tried to do that, um, and That's I've nice watched and all of your videos on how to do that. And I just, <laughs> especially in a container, I do, I have I'm I can't grow anything in a container. I have some raised beds but, in my back. But you're in Texas. You don't need containers. You can just put them oh, outside. I yeah, and that's just true. Grow. My raised beds, everything does really well in the in the raised beds, right? Uh, and we actually had a really mild winter this year, uh, which was really nice. But uh, we we have a short window for peppers, like even like in tomatoes uh, here. You know, once it hits mid June to July, it's 100 degrees every day. I guess that's the you got the opposite problem. We do. We we're trying to get that heat, whereas you're trying to avoid it. I think when. You know, for us, the biggest challenge is the cold, the freezing. That's why I have heating inside my uh, greenhouses, yeah. uh, just to maintain above freezing. But yeah, in summer, man, if it hits 120 Fahrenheit inside my polytunnel or my greenhouse, I'm happy as hell. My plants might droop a little bit, but it does fantastic things for the but roots. It, it, I, we talked about this the other day, but it cools down there. Like for us, you know, it may cool down to 85 degrees at night, and you just don't get good flower set. No, no, that's that's your biggest issue is maintaining that um, the humidity level and also the coolness. They just will not set fruit when it goes over certain temperatures. So typically, when it gets above the hundred degrees Fahrenheit, on average, for us, my plants have set fruit, so it's not an issue. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going to give this a try. Okay. Um, the smells, you can definitely smell the capsicum chinens, um, and I can smell the reaper in there. <clears throat> so it's going to be a hot one, I'm guessing. The texture is amazing, by the way. Thanks. <clears throat> so that's definitely got the capsicum chin ends. The, there's that that taste that comes first, and then the temperature builds. I have a feeling that the the honey one probably has. I know at the heat's building. The honey the honey one ha had a more consistent heat level for like yeah. about five minutes. It was maintaining that. This is building a little bit, but it, I'd say it's not I, I too far off the honey one. Yeah, and, and none of our hot sauces are made to be, you know, mouth busters, right? I just, I'm, you know, I, I love the one percent of us out there who like the hot stuff, but I'd rather sell to the other ninety nine too. And that's something I've had to learn because obviously the most vocal people are the ones that, hey, what's the hottest thing you got? You know, I get those emails constantly or in the messages or in the uh, chat. That's building in heat. That is definitely building now. So now yeah. it's hotter than the honey one was. Yeah. Um, it's even making me sweat a little. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I also like, I mean, for me, it's flavor first, right? And I I know I need to, wow, that that took a while to heat up. Now it's heating up. Don't try it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's heating up. That's the back of the throat now. That's not on the tongue. It's, it's interesting how different chilies burn differently. Yeah. yeah. That was definitely back of the throat, like just at the entrance of the throat there, it, surrounding it like pins and needles. Wow. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm flavor first. And I think uh, a lot of the chilies I'm growing this year, there's there's a few that I'm concentrating on. Hey, some heat. And um, I want to bring out some, some milder sauces, not... I don't think I'll ever really put out something too low heat because it's difficult for me to justify some of the prices um, that, you know, for the shipping and all that sort of thing for a mm. source that's going to be something like you might as well go get a Texas peat or something like that. So I'll never do yeah. it at that sort of level. Uh, if I was in the U.S., it might be a different story, but it's still a lot of my sales are to the U.S. It's It's the bigger market, I think. <clears throat> that heat is heating up. Let me sweating. You know, that stings, uh, one of our, that stings uh, my, there. My, it's good flavor, though. Good flavor. My original hot sauce that I started, the base of the foundation of the hot sauce, of ATX hot sauce, it's the juice. Uh, that's the, the juice. real yellow one over there. Yeah, it's, it's habaneros, pineapple, coconut, cardamom, garlic, a little I bit think of that was the. I think that was the first comment uh, on the live stream today. Was, was it this one? 
the um, pineapple one that sort of inspired him to make hot sauce? Uh, no, not the pineapple, the mango. Oh, there's a mango one apparently that you that you made. Which I don't even your... make anymore. <laughs> no, but yeah, it inspired him that. to start his hot sauce journey. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that was the first one there. So I'm going to try those one more my, source. Those yeah, are my favorite comments, uh, FYI, and, and phone oh, calls, the inspiration, and emails that I get. Yeah, the um, it's the inspire, the being able to inspire anyone is amazing, right? And I'll never take that for granted. Uh, well, like yeah, I said earlier, you inspired me on this journey, so I appreciate you. <laughs> I know, and I feel uh, very uh, embarrassed by that, but <laughs> I'm very thankful as well. <laughs> So I'm going to try this one. I'm going to see. I mean, I've got some other comments here. This is Chili Chump. She's busy chatting in the in the chat. Any, any other questions for John himself? Yeah, there's a few there. I've highlighted. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a good one, actually. Because uh, you actually spoke to me about this, John, about the eclipse. Um, Liz Oppenhouse, uh, Oppenhouse asks, are you making an eclipse-related source? Uh, no, just black, make it a black, a black sauce, <laughs> you just make it a black, a piece of black garlic or something like that. Uh, no. Um, in fact, we're, there's supposed to be an influx of people into Texas this week because of the eclipse, which is tomorrow. In fact, over my house, we're going to have two and a half minutes of totality. Uh, then if you go a little bit further west of town, it's like four and a half minutes. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but crazy. the roads are already crazy around here right now. And, uh, yeah, uh, no, there's, we should, I should have made the, should have made it six months ago though, if I really wanted to have an impact with the eclipse sauce, but next, the next full eclipse, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so was that 2076? <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. I may not be around. <laughs> this smells, this smells incredible. A very fruit forward smell. This is the juice. That's the juice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, definitely, it's a tropical yeah. fruit. You know, it's not, um. Uh, it's it's more of a vibrant hot sauce than anything else, but it is uh, one of my one of my favorites. In fact, we used that as the we were in a barbecue contest this weekend here in. Austin. Oh, how did that go? You were telling me about that. How did you? Yeah, it's the Kansas City fare? Barbecue Society, so it's a very big one. There was 50, 60 teams there. We our our brisket came in number twelve out of fifty people, and our uh, chef's uh, uh, cook's small. choice came in number ten out of fifty people. So we did pretty good. Didn't have a lot of Excellent. sleep this weekend. I'll put it that way. So, is that your own rubs and stuff, or are you using sauces? How, how are you doing that? No, no, I got my own rubs, my own sauces. I have a barbecue sauce. It's a cherry chipotle barbecue sauce. Actually, there's a video I show people how to make it on the website on our, okay. our YouTube channel. Um, but I use that. The juice we use that is the binder for our pork ribs, and a binder is really good. A, like a solution you put on there before you put your spices, so it adheres better to it. So you, I'm, I'm noticing, unless I'm just not seeing it on the label, uh, you're not, you don't use any binders like xanthan gum or anything like that. Um, we, that one I may not, but there, some of the other ones we do, uh, put a, oh, a so small do. amount of xanthan. Xan I, I find yeah. it weird. Some people are against xanthan gum. They think of it as an additive or as a, it's not uh, like an it's, E number or something. It's, it's, it's innocuous. It's, and especially the amount you're using, it's like 0.01% at most. Yeah. And if you want a good mouthfeel on a soft, I, I think you almost have to do it. There's one video I made, I, I remember that you made years ago, and I think you did it with your Buffalo sauce. Uh, where you created the the magnetic plate underneath it, and you yeah. had the magnets in, in the bottom of the jar, and so it stirred it for like three or four weeks, or however long you did it. But obviously, we can't do that if we're you know mass producing a sauce. I've I've found a way to do it. I'll, I'll have to no, share you that with you uh, <laughs> offline. Um, I'm able to do it with thirty liters. It's a little device I had commissioned from Italy. Um, I'll, sh I'll show it to you at some point. It's, uh, okay. it's got a little one, ho one horsepower motor on it. <laughs> it's quite an interesting thing. I still haven't used it properly yet, but the theory is there. I just need to yeah. need to actually I'm, use I, it. <clears throat> you know, right now, I think one of the things that we are as a group trying to do is find a better pasteurization process. Uh, right now, we use all um, uh, Vitamix blenders. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you run them for 11 minutes, they'll heat up to that 165, 170 that you need. But you're so reducing the life of your blenders there. Um, oh, I know. We go through some blenders. So if yeah. Vitamix, if you're watching this, you know, I, I, I'm one of your best patrons. So maybe send me one. <laughs> They're expensive. My goodness. Yeah, they I switched are. to Vitamix from a Ninja. And I still suggest people get a Ninja if they're going to be doing those small batches. Because yeah. the Ninja, is a, it's a great system. And especially with the multi-blade, I like that. It really breaks down the, the yeah. chilies very well. 
Uh, it's not going to do as good as the Vitamix. You have to run Vitamix. it through a mesh, though. Every time I've yeah. used a uh, Vitamix, you start to run it through the mesh. And with the, I mean, the Vitamix, the Ninja you do, but with the Vitamix, it'll, it'll pulverize everything in that pasteurization uh, process. 100%. But it's also, I mean, you could buy four Ninja blenders with all the attachments for the price of one. <laughs> well, actually, probably five at this point with how expensive they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, the pasteurization. So are you pasteurizing all your sources? We are, yes. Yeah. Okay. We sure are. Um, I pasteurize some, but not all. It, There's, I, I try and depend on the fermentation time. Fermentation time partially, but also if I'm not adding other ingredients, if it is a basic sauce where I'm just using chilies and maybe some vinegar, then I'm not going to do it, right? If I'm going to be adding anything else that potentially could start fermenting or anything like that, then I will definitely pasteurize. Um, it's quite interesting. I had, uh, I have a, one of my guys, so I, I do consultancy for people trying to make hot sauce businesses and they'll ask me questions and that. And I had a chap, he's based out in Canada and he contacted me saying, um, he, he, he saw how you pasteurize your sauces using the, the blender. So he went and used his own blender, which was not a Vitamix. And he mm. sat that for 11 minutes. And he says, yeah, it, it's weird. The sauce smells like smoke. It's very odd. I'm like, that's not the sauce, buddy. <laughs> that's the blender. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it does work. I mean, it's like making, you can make soup with your Vitamix, right? Because that's how hot yeah. it can get things. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit precious about my Vitamix. That, that's used on camera. I have other systems I use for blending down my chilies. But that thing is treated like a, a baby. I don't, I don't, I don't work it too hard. But yeah, yeah, I just can't afford to replace the damn thing. Well, every once uh, in a while, Amazon will have a sale here in the states for uh, Vitamix. You can get them for like 100, 220 bucks, two hundred twenty five dollars when they have those big sales. Yeah, still expensive. You're right, very expensive. Yeah, it's. I'm, I've got. Sorry, I've got my glasses are misting up. It's your, it's your sources. Um, so I didn't actually give the the verdict. The juice, it's really good. Can I can I give some critique? I would, I would make it a little thicker. Okay. It's one of those sauces that I think the the thickness. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but I, I, I love this like the the texture of your um, which one the the Reaper. That texture mm. is amazing. That is yeah. It's like almost try, perfect. Try the, the the smoked fi uh, habanero five pepper. That's the one you mentioned before. Is is this one going to blow my head off now? No, no, um, that's like my, my go-to. It's my, my homage to a Mexican hot sauce almost. Uh, we've got five different uh, peppers in there, all you know, smoked and fresh. And I can smell garlic up front. And Not as strong. You don't like, yeah, yeah. If it's uh, it's a it's a little, uh, little thicker than that juice, it's probably about the same consistency, maybe even thicker than the oh, Reaper. Yeah. That is thicker than the Reaper. Yeah, you can see that. Well, I don't know if you can see yeah. it, but the fact is, stick it to the spoon. Yeah, we use a lot of and that's just personal preference. Oh, it's not, that's just my personal preference no, on no, the no, juice. I... Oh, that is good. And I like that you didn't overdo the smokiness. Yeah, yeah, we, it's, it's a little bit understated. We, we that's on purpose, but that's per <laughs> that's perfect because it, it, it can overwhelm, overwhelm it massively. Yeah. yeah, I've had some sources that get sent to me. <laughs> you must get that as well. Uh, people sending you sauces to try. It's, it's well, always a scary thing. Get, there's, there's a big hot sauce festival thrown by the <coughs> here every year. And we've won about eight or nine awards over the last couple of years. Uh, but I always have people from the YouTube channel, they'll, they'll bring me a bottle of sauce with their handwritten you know, name on the side of it. And uh, I usually talk to the person a few minutes before I actually try it. <laughs> I want to make sure what was your process to do this. Some people get offended because that's what I do as well. I've been sick by a source that's been sent in by uh, a viewer when I was much smaller channel and it just wasn't done properly. I should have trusted my gut and not had it, but I tried it and it gave me, yeah, it gave me some problems. Um, but since then, I'll always ask, you know, just tell me your process. I'm not looking for your recipe because that's what they think. I'm trying to steal their recipe or something. I, I don't care. That's not what I'm trying to do. I want to make sure I'm going to be sense. safe. Yeah. Um, I mean, especially I, if you're not a commercial source. My recipes are on YouTube, you know, for everybody to see. <laughs> exactly. You know my entire process. You know how I do this. You can have faith in that. Um, John, I'm going to have to. I just realized we, we've been talking for ages and I, I've been keeping you way too long and I've got a competition I need to uh, do a draw for, but I could talk to you for yeah. ages. I'm sure we can do it another time if we can organize. Uh, I know you have a busy schedule as well, 
but I'm sure it'd be great. Maybe the end of the season, we could talk about some new sources or recipes that you've come up with and we have another chat. I'm sure my viewers would love to see. Uh, it's been a, it's been a joy today, Sean. Thank you. And thank you, Miss Chili Chump. And uh, thanks for all your uh, subscribers out there for chiming in with some good questions. And uh, Excellent. Check and go out check out, too. Yeah, go check out ATX Hot Sauce. You need, we need to get your, your subscribers up. I was quite surprised that your subscribers were where they were. I'm, I'm sure you're going to get a boost. You, you just need that one video to pop off, and yeah. you'll, get the, you'll get those viewers coming in. But everyone, go check him out. He's, he's really awesome. And some oh, great nice. videos, especially if you're missing out on mine because I haven't put out a source video for ages, I know. So go check him out. He's got tons. <laughs> I'll keep All right. This thanks, guys. Thanks again, Sean. Thanks very much. And thanks for the sources as well, John. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Well, that was awesome. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed that. That was, yeah, I, I get lost in time when I'm talking to people like John, you know, people that are passionate about what they do and are good at what they do. Um, it's just a real joy and some really good sources. So go check it out if you are looking for some. He is based in the US, so shipping won't be as much as what it is when you're buying from me. Uh, but go check him out. He's got a good selection of different sources, I'm sure. Well, there's a few more that I want to try. I'll probably have a bit later tonight with my dinner, I like this blue habanero with blueberries. That sounds really good. But yeah, good sources. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. That um, that Reaper one does build. It's it's a weird one. It's not hot for the first like five minutes or so. Um, actually, bring Mrs. Chili Chump in. Um, for the first five minutes or so, it's or well, like three minutes, I should say. It's has a little bit of tang to it, and then suddenly it starts building up around the back. It's like, whoa. I think it'll be too hot for you. Definitely too hot for you. <laughs> I don't know. My tolerance. <laughs> we, we need to work on tolerance my tolerance. Tolerance is improving. But... Yeah, well, we can go it's, through the range. It, tasting those three sources, I now get what you say about peppers having different ways that they burn your mouth, because each of those burnt in different places. I, I need to take these things into account. I just, I just uh, assume that people know this, that they've tried different chilies and that sort of thing. They haven't just had commercial sources. But when I mean, you bring up a good point, if you've never tried that before, it's difficult to really explain how they burn in different mm. ways. Yeah, and it brings pleasure in different one, ways as well. The second one hit the back of the throat. The third one started kind of on the tongue and then it was the lips and then it's the roof of the mouth now and that's that's kind of what's lingering yeah it's it's hanging yeah. around that's good that's yeah. why i'm sweating <laughs> wow <clears throat> what is john's website uh atxhotsauce.com i believe uh grosh and uh let's let's jump in so we have got let's do the giveaway because i know some of you guys will probably have to run off and do sunday lunch and sunday dinner um, but I'm going to stick around for a little bit longer if Mr. Chili Chump's okay with that. I'm okay. Somebody said you don't look cold anymore. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sweating now. But if I take my shirt off, then everything's coming off. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'll, I'll stick around a bit longer and we'll answer some questions because we haven't actually got through a lot. I, yeah, I didn't expect it to take that long. But Since you ignore my bonus message, say it, Sean. <laughs> say it. Uh, see, the problem is now that is hidden behind... Uh, I must bring that up there. There we go. Oh, and it's disappeared. <laughs> That's Mr. Mad Craig. Since you ignore my bonus message, say it, Sean, say it. Okay, Mad Craig, I'm going to be making a phone book video just for you. How's that? I know that's not what you're asking. Uh, hit the like button, guys, please. Uh, it does help the videos out. I know I never ask for it, but please click it. See if we get some more viewers, some new viewers that um, might get interested in hot sauce as well and growing chilies and all the other awesomeness that comes with this amazing hobby. We've only got a couple of questions for you as well. So if people want to oh, we've got questions. throw them in. Yeah, if people want to jump in with questions, um, they can while I do the draw. So it's exclamation mark Q space and then the question. Uh, it could be about anything growing, making hot sauce, uh, about YouTube or whatever else. Um, feel free to do that. So let's do the draw. Let's see who has won. We're going to do two, winning, uh, two winners today. So... Winner number one. And if the person isn't in the chat at the moment, then I'm going to move on and pick someone else. So just keep that in mind. First winner, David Haas. Is David Haas in the house? <laughs> David Haas in the house. If you are still in the chat, please say hello, David. Like and is he, is he still there? Looks like it. I think I need to get refilled here. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> 
I'll see if the message comes up. David Haas, wake up if you have fallen asleep listening to us talking about hot sauce. And say hello, please. <clears throat> oh, there he goes. So, David, oh, I'm sure Mrs. Chili Chump will let you know exactly how to get in touch and we'll get that sent out to you. And I'm sure if you haven't tried it yet, you are going to get addicted as well. It is honestly really, really good. Um, the yummy salt. Mrs. Chilchamp puts it on everything. We, we always have to have a big tub of that in the kitchen. She One of her favorites, actually one of my favorites, is uh, when we're making corn on the cob. A uh, little bit of butter, some sprinkle of the yummy salt, and then wrap it up in tin foil and put it in the oven at about 180 degrees, which is, what's that, about 370 Fahrenheit? Uh, 180 degrees Celsius, and leave it in there for, what, 30 minutes? 25. 25, 30 minutes, depending on how big the corn is. And that is just amazing very very good cool let's do the second giveaway to see who we have pick a winner and that is jim <laughs> jim well jim's the username i know there's probably a few other jims mm -hmm. in the chat but this is jim uh the user jim please say hello if you are in the chat still and if he isn't we'll move on um while we wait for him jim again Yep. Oh, there he is. That's amazing. We've got both winners first time round, not actually disappeared. <laughs> um, let's have a look here. Let's see some questions. What have we got? What have we got? What are you highlighting? I can see lots those of highlights were, going on. Yeah, those those are the ones John. for John. Okay. Um, Ryan has said for John, and I'm sure John is still watching. Um, he says he's from Allendale. This is Ryan. He's from Allendale, and great to see you guys on the Best Chili Tubers channel. Is that ATX Hot Sauce or me? I don't know. It's both of us. <laughs> joined. Um, Rob Holden, this is for both of us. Going to be my first year attempting to make sauce. Ideas for a super hot sauce that involves marugo or primatales. Uh, keep it simple. If it's your first time making these hot sauces, especially if you've gone through the effort of growing these things, which can be quite challenging, especially things like the primatales, um getting that right and getting a good harvest that can be a challenge so make sure that you make sure that you well once you've got those chilies wait for them to be properly ripe before you start fermenting them and then the sauce honestly the first sauce you make there just keep it simple make it make it a straightforward primatali sauce maybe water it down with a little bit of nice vinegar so maybe a rice vinegar or a, a nice uh white wine vinegar and get the flavors right there. Um, you can also go with garlic, it's an old favorite. If you do want to start adding other flavors, one of my favorite, especially for super hearts, because it's a very strong flavored spice, is cardamom. So cardamom pods, grind them up with a pestle and mortar and stick that in there as well. That adds an amazing flavor. But honestly, first time doing it, if it's your first time making sauces, then keep it simple, keep it straightforward. Figure out what you like, what you don't like, and then maybe the next time you make a sauce, then you can start experimenting, make something with more. Um, that's, yeah, that's my suggestion. Oh, I have, <laughs> I have to play this because I spent time recording it, but until we go into the next um, next few questions, which I will, I'll answer some more questions. We'll stick around to probably 25 past, uh, as long as you guys can stick around. But uh, I have a little video from the garden. So a quick update and uh, we'll see what's going on outside. And you can see, the finally finished greenhouse. The final greenhouse has been built, the one on the end there, and uh, it feels so good to have it done. I think it was two live streams ago, it was my January or February live stream. I showed you the greenhouse pretty much in pieces. I had put together some of the framing, but that was about it. And then the weather just got shocking again and never really had a chance to get out here and get it done. But I think it was about two weeks ago, we finally had some decent enough weather, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but we had some decent weather and we were able to get it up. So it's looking good, really am pleased to have it up and nice and solid. Uh, obviously there's a few things I need to still do in here, like fit the staging, that's down there, and uh, we'll get that done in the next few weeks. It's not a real rush for that just yet. Let's go take a look at some of these other greenhouses. So this one here, you can see we've cleared it out. A little bit of work still to do in there. I need to make sure all the drippers are okay. So before I go and put any plants in here, we'll run the drippers through and I'll make sure they're all nice and clean. 
and if you want me to show you a video on how I do that I'm happy to do that it is a little tedious and boring but might interest you and of course here we actually have some action going on I also need to test the drippers in here for any problems so let's have a quick look in here and see how we're doing these two bad boys right here are my Dorset Naga monster plants and I've recently potted them up for the third time and they're looking healthy you can see the lovely growth lots and lots of growth having a bit of a problem with ants in here uh, well you can see them down there we have loads of ants in this place and I need to get rid of them yes I love ants in general but not when they're uh, trying to make their home inside my plants uh, we have loads of ants outside and obviously that's great for the ecosystem but it doesn't do very well with these pots so yeah these are looking good mostly these are chilies and you can see them all there with my new tags nice and colorful and those will be available in the store pretty much next week i think if you have any questions about that let me know in the comments of the live stream but here you can see they're looking good some bigger than others obviously but that's to be expected these are my tomatoes and uh, those will be going outside in probably a month's time but they're growing nice and quickly and they're looking really healthy we have a few squashes and pumpkins uh, actually i've potted some of them up over here these are my giant pumpkins over here that's a giant pumpkin and that one there and then those are all squashes gem squashes uh, and that one there is a cucumber piccolo de perigi 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 and then of course my lovely bonchi look at that it's got fruit on it and it's doing really well again we have ants i can see down there and this here is my lemon peri which is again looking very healthy i overwintered this one and we of course have some lemon peris in amongst these don't know where they are right now but there are a few in here from i think it's f5 this year so I'm really excited for those to grow out but i think this one here is f3 or f4 i'll have to check my notes let's go have a quick look inside the potting shed really not a lot to see in there to be honest but uh, I do have some hydroponic stuff going on in there. These are my hydroponics plants, my marigolds, which I should have started earlier. Those there will help with getting rid of the aphids once they come through, because they'll attract hoverflies and things like that. The little plant there I'm nursing, and then these here are my corn. We've lost one plant already, and then we've lost three more. I tried to recover them, but yeah, they were a bit far gone but that's four plants out of around about 800 so I'm not going to complain too much well there's a quick update from the garden and the new greenhouse let's get back inside and uh, out of the wind let's carry on with the live stream so finally the greenhouse is built um that was a solid was it three days because we did other stuff as well between the hedges and stuff it was about, uh, I'd say about two and a half days. If that, you were probably... We, we got it up half. quite quickly. Huh? Day and a half, but then Chubby's Chase the glass. helped you prior yeah. to that. But uh, yeah, I got it up. I mean, the, the, the rhino greenhouse is just, it's a lovely one. I could take this off now. It's half of what's making me hot. <laughs> um, the rhino greenhouses are one of the easier ones to put up. And they, especially the way the glass fits in, you're not using like these, those little wire things or another funny systems it's literally just sliding a strip up as long as you have it on a level base then it's very easy to get the the glass in the problem i had is actually the base wasn't very level the guy who laid the concrete you know, i wish he was watching this because then <laughs> you'd understand how peed off i am with him he completely screwed up the base and uh, also left behind all the excess <laughs> the excess concrete he left it in a big pile in the front of our yard so i don't know how i'm gonna get rid of that but Anyway, we got, we got around that and we managed to put some spaces in underneath the, um, the frame and got the glass in quite easy. So thankfully that's up in there, uh, up and going. 
I am filming a, filming a series where I'm going to show you how I set that greenhouse up the same way I've set up my other two greenhouses and kind of how I've set up my polytunnel. My polytunnel is a little bit different because it's using full hydroponic systems there. But my other two greenhouses, I've been asked a lot of times about how do I set up the dripper system and the automation in that. So I will document that entire process. It gives me a fantastic opportunity now to actually show you that whole process from scratch. So that'll be good. Um, are the greenhouses heated? No, it's not heated. There is a heater, but it's not heated. What I consider heated is if you're kept keeping it at like 20 degrees Celsius, that would be heated. Um, we have it on frost protection. So if it drops down below four degrees Celsius, then the heater kicks in and keeps the frost away from the roots. So basically, I mean, the last two days, there has been growth on those plants. They're enjoying things. But before that, I can see my average temperatures. We're sitting around eight degrees, nine degrees Celsius and that means your plants are going to be, go fairly dormant. So I'm not excited about having them out there just yet. Uh, I'd love to be able to keep them at about 16 degrees Celsius, but that would just cost, cost an absolute fortune. I have a, I think it's a five kilowatt heater in there. If that was running the whole time, yeah, that's a lot of money. Um, that would be the equivalent of a pound a minute, a pound an hour. So 24 pound a day. That's a lot of money. Wow. We're still paying, what, 20p a a unit 20p a kilowatt hour uh, yeah it's not it's not great um <laughs> bobby welch yeah it's supposed to do the job correctly and clean up after himself you're asking too much tell me about it um yeah i mean i asked him i mean he he was on the cusp i asked him to have a foot i wanted the base to be wider much wider than the greenhouse i wanted a foot around the outside of it um it, it ended up that there's literally maybe four inches. So it was very tight putting it on. He also smoothed out like an area probably about that wide for the base to go on. And the rest of it was just left rough, which didn't work with the way that he had laid it out. So yeah, I'm not happy with it. But anyway, it is what it is. We've got the greenhouse up. That's all that matters. I did see some comments about the ants. Yeah, the ants are a pain in the backside. I put in some stuff to sort them out now. Like I said in the video, I actually love ants and I think they're amazing for the ecosystem. Unfortunately, they don't do very well when they're inside an enclosed environment like my greenhouse. They are causing havoc in there. Um, we have loads of ants throughout our entire property. So yeah, I am going to be getting rid of these. I'm using borax, uh, mixed borax with sugar and, um, and then I have that in like little traps that I create and they're in little jars so it stops Barney or other animals eating it and that should get rid of those nests of ants because I, I did see a couple comments there ants the reason they're a problem themselves they're not an actually an issue ants are actually really good it aerates the soil and it's kind of like what worms do the problem they have is that they farm aphids and I've seen it happen so they'll actually keep the aphid uh the, the aphid eggs overwintered and then as soon as, you know, as soon as there's some warmer temperatures, they'll bring those aphid eggs out and plant them back on the plants so that the aphids then start creating the sap. It's that sticky stuff that you get on your leaves if you have aphids. They create that and then the ants go and eat that sap. So they actually protect the aphids as well. They'll, they'll attack uh, ladybugs and things like that. So yeah, they're not great if you're trying to remove aphids and whitefly and that sort of thing. So yeah, we'll get rid of those. I think I should have done that at the end of last season rather than doing it now. It's it, It'll be fine at the end of the day, but yeah, you really need to be starting that process in like October, November. Oh, what's Barney up to today? Sebastian. Oh, you didn't see him. He was on camera a little bit earlier. Actually, he's, he's, he's there. I didn't realize he had come in. Come back. Let's get a picture of Miss, 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 Mr. Barney. Can we get Mr. Barney? We've got a picture of you. <laughs> Let's see here. Instalink. Why are you not working now? There he is. Yeah, he's got his little... Uh, he's having a bad dream. <laughs> uh, Barney, Barney sleeps on the desk when we're working during the day. Uh, he'll come and lie on the bed. He's heard his name. <laughs> oh, actually, he heard my phone beep, so he thinks someone's at the door. Yeah, Barney's grown up a lot. 
Uh, we're actually, we've just bought some fencing, so we will able to fence off uh, part of our property so that he can go out without being on a lead. Because at the moment, when we let him out, we have to be careful of the chickens and that. So we stick him on a, a tether and yeah, it limits him a bit, but we'll sort that out with, uh, with a bit of fencing. I bet the live stream would be way more popular if it was just a video of Barney. <laughs> live, uh, not actually doing anything, just just lying there. Okay, so answer a couple more questions and then we'll make a move. You guys can get back to your Sundays. Uh, any tips against thrips? I think they're eating my ch chili sprouts. Unfortunately, no, I don't. I'm not 100% sure what thrips are. We don't really get them unless it's another name for something like aphids and things like that. I've just had a look, apparently. They're also known as thunderflies. But thunderflies. Oh, we've had those. Like, they don't look yeah. like what I would. Your mic. No, it's, your face. it's thunderflies. Um, thunderflies. Wow, they're eating your chili sprouts. Yeah. Um, well, what what we call thunderflies, they're tiny little things. They don't really affect the plants too much, but they're just annoying anyway. Just get in the house. Um, Best thing I could say is start growing some companion plants. If you're going to have things like ladybugs and um, what are they called? The uh, what are those other things called? Wasps. The oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're terrible today. Anyway, grow grow some. You saw me show you in the video. We started some um, uh, French. What are the French marigolds? French marigolds. <laughs> My mind's gone blank today. Uh, grow some marigolds. They attract the predator um, things like ladybugs, and um, they will sort them out. They, they'll just eat them up. So that's the best way to do it. Hoverflies. There you go, Jason. Hoverflies. Hoover. Or Hoover, Hooverflies, Grosh. <laughs> I prefer that name, Hooverflies. They hoover up all the aphids. That's a great name. <laughs> Mad Craig as well. You guys, it's because you, you guys are both German. That's why. <laughs> Um, hey, Simplify Gardening, good to see you. Yeah, so if you, if you want to know about thrips, I'm sure Simplify Gardening, Tony, who's on the chat there, uh, I'm sure he could tell you all about it. Actually, his gardening books just come out. I don't have it in front of me, but his gardening books just come out. And wow, it's Tony, you've gone in depth there, man. You've got a whole section on lighting, even. Uh, it's kind of puts, uh, yeah, you put a nice spin on gardening. You've really gone in depth, but uh, Tony's got a new gardening book out and it's got a lot of information. I'm sure there's probably a section in there about getting rid of thrips and aphids and all the rest of it. So go and check that up. <laughs> Hoover flies, I love it. Uh, but yeah, it's available. It's, I think it was a bestseller in the UK for quite a while, or was that global? I don't know. Um, but go check it out. It's on Amazon. Um, but yeah, you, you have a look for Simplify Gardening. I'm sure it'll come top of the list if you guys are looking for an interesting gardening book. Getting ready for the springtime, summertime. Uh, do you use companion planting when growing your chili plants? This is from Ruth Smith. Yes, I do. I love to grow the um, the French marigolds. The African ones are fine as well, but the French marigolds specifically, they're the ones that uh, they attract the hoover flies. <laughs> so those are the ones that I go with. I've actually got two different varieties this year of French marigolds, just to spice it up a little bit, but they're very easy to grow and um, and they look great as well. They smell good and they, they attract all the um, the good stuff. And they also, they also um, the smell of them, they, the aphids and that don't really like it too much. So it's a good thing as well. Coradamai, any opinion on taste heat between soil and hydro grown chilies? This is, I guess it's like anything uh, with, so in my experience, and you, you would have seen a video, if you look back, I think 2018, when I was doing some experiments with hydroponics, I grew some jalapenos in hydroponics and also in soil. And the ones that were in soil, they weren't as big. They were The plants weren't as big. The harvest wasn't as big. But the flavor of the chilies were way better. Uh, the heat level was much higher. The hydroponics ones, not as much, not so good. Um, so yeah, that was, but that's anecdotal. It was still fairly early on in my hydro uh, career, I guess you want to call it. And I might have got the nutrients wrong, which can really have an impact. I'm sure you could get hydroponics grown chilies to taste as good, if not better. Uh, I just need to really dial in the nutrients because remember, they can't adjust themselves and take what they need from things like the soil, which has all those nutrients inside it and inside a good compost or soil mix like I show you guys. Um, they can just go get what they need. A lot of the time, that's why you can use that compost again the next year, uh, just mix in a few little additives, but there's still a lot of nutrients in there. The chili's going to take what they need. And there you go. With hydroponics, 
they only can take what you give them specifically, what you're feeding them, the ratios that you're feeding them. So it does limit you a little bit. But you do get much bigger plants in Hydra. I will say that much. Uh, wow. Okay. Those questions completed. So do we have any more? Oh, I uh, saw your video where you wondered turning to growing tomatoes. Were you serious? It would be super to have one place to buy seeds for chilies and tomatoes. No, I'm not. <laughs> I was Did you watch the video? I made one statement in the video saying, oh, maybe I should grow tomatoes because they're much easier. Uh, they grew much quicker and that sort of thing. But no, I'm not switching over to growing tomatoes. It was just a bit of a joke and a bit of like somebody in the comments put clickbait it wasn't clickbait i mean i literally made the statement it would be clickbait if i never said it or whatever but anyway um I, i'd love to sell tomato seeds the problem is it's one of those that are pretty heavily restricted especially i mean i could sell them in the uk so if you're in the uk i probably could do something there but selling them outside of the country massively restricted um yeah so i gotta be a little bit careful there but who knows maybe in the uk if you are there i could sell you some but i'm, I'm literally I'm, i don't want to grow a variety of chili, uh, tomatoes i there's i find the tomatoes that i like that are going to work well with my sauce the sweetness uh, low count of seeds uh, and very meaty less liquid those are the ones i want which i have uh, the san Marzano too and that's what i'm growing um they grew very well last year and they're beautiful beautiful tomatoes and perfect for sauces and that's what i'm growing them for purely and simply so if those are the seeds you want hey i'm sure i'll have plenty how's your second book coming along oh still are you still planning to, to get your original <laughs> back in solid copy yes i am planning on doing that um that's a, that's a job for you. You can you can organize. I'll give you my contact name and we'll get that sorted out. We we did go down the road of getting a, a second print of my original Stay Spicy recipe book because it is available on ebook on chilichump.com. But um, to reprint it again, the people that we used before they were based in Italy, and they their prices are about three times what I paid originally. So yeah, it really affects what I can sell it for, and I don't want to up the price of the book. So it's it's a big book it's got a lot of pages and if i put that on amazon for print on demand it actually costs me six quid more six quid more to myself than i'm charging for you guys to buy it so it didn't make sense and that's why i need to source somewhere else that's going to be able to print the quality that i need a uh, nice glossy full color um prints and with the number of pages that I have and yeah, just the overall quality, I want it to be right. So we'll, we're having a look. If any of you are in the print business or work for a company that does that sort of thing, get in contact and if we can make a plan, we can do something. But I am keeping an eye out. There's a few places that I'm still talking to at the moment, waiting for a response. But yeah, when you're printing out, when, you, when you're ordering like 5,000 books at a time, <laughs> you've got to be 100% sure that what you're getting is the quality you want. The, I mean, the bigger question is, why is the other book still on your to-do list? <laughs> <laughs> Deflecting much. <laughs> the other book is ready. I just need to proofread the damn thing. Um, Mr. Chili Champ has gone and put it together for me in terms of the structure and that. It's literally me having to go through it, spending some time doing that. There's always There's always 10 tasks on my table every single day that I get to the computer or get outside. I need to make that a priority. I love um, the hot sauces that you promised. Oh, sure, sure. Time. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be here for the next live stream, are you? Mm, we'll leave you in the lounge. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I control from the lounge. <laughs> Rob McQuill. We'll answer this one last. Well, we'll do two more questions. There's, there's another one there I can see that was interesting. But uh, Rob McQuill asks, have you tried grafting any of your chilies as a rootstock using, say, a Dorset Naga as rootstock and jalapeno to see if it grows massive? Love the channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Rob. Um, that isn't really how it would work. Your graft, that will be on there. That will grow as per the phenotype that it is um it's not like with fruit trees unfortunately it won't really take on that quality it might do after a couple of years or after a full season of doing it but you know i have i have grafted before you don't see me doing videos on it because i didn't, I didn't get too excited about it making frankenstein plants um but yeah I, I guess it would be useful if you have a plant that has a massive root system that grew very quickly and you then wanted to transplant a 
you want it to speed up a plant's growth cycle. So you then graft it onto something with a massive rootstock, because for me, roots are everything. They mean more to me than pretty leaves or flowers or anything. The root system has to be solid and big, and then you're going to get a great harvest at the end of the season. So maybe that's a good idea if you can maintain a good root system and then just graft a plant on there that you want. That might work, but no, it's not something I've experimented with too much. And then last one here we have from Carbo19. Is there a brother-in-law tasting event for 200,000 subscribers? To be honest, I would do it now um, if I could. It, everybody's got busy. And also we've moved about, what's it, about an hour and a half? Yeah. Hour and a half, two hours away from my sister and brother-in-law. Uh, we're also an hour and a half away from my brother. So it's a bit difficult to get everyone to come together. But we'll make a plan. It has to happen. Um, got some other priorities, though. So you guys might not be aware of it. I have spoken about this with my patrons. Again, if you do want to become a patron or a YouTube member, uh, you can go and check that out, patron.com forward slash chili chump. Um, and that's, yeah, it's a, it gives you access to a private Discord server that I have. There's also a public Discord server. You can go check that out. But anyway, I've chatted with them. Um, I put it out there that I want to go and visit America this year. So I want to do a 10 to 14 day trip and we're just trying to work out where I'll go. And I'd love to meet as many of you guys as I can. And uh, mainly want to figure out what restaurants I should visit, uh, what wings joints I should go to, uh, World's Hottest Burger, that sort of thing. So we're trying to plan that out. When exactly that'll happen, uh, we have a few options. I have to time it in between different cycles of my growing season. So probably after I first fully potted up my plants, which would probably be, be the end of April, probably second week of May. So then it might be actually back end of May might be a good option if I don't have other commitments. We need to synchronize holidays with the other, uh, with Barney sitters. Yeah. So yeah, I will sort that out. But that that's something I really want to do. And also uh, Europe, we're going to Germany on the motorbikes with my brother and my father. Uh, that's going to happen in July um and yeah i'll let you guys know there might be some places that we could meet up for a beer i think we are going into munich so if anyone is around that area that'd be great to see you guys um and then of course i do want to do a europe trip very similar to the one that i'm going to do to america and um that i, I don't know when that might be it might, might be a good one for winter actually when we shut things down here and uh go off in november december it's gonna be cold yeah it's fine <laughs> we could warm ourselves up with some hot sauces <laughs> So yeah, that'll be great. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me on the live stream. And again, I know John's not on it anymore, but thank you so much, John from ATX Hot Source. That was a fantastic conversation. Really enjoyed it. What I'll do is maybe I'll cut out that section of the um, the live stream if you guys did miss it and you want to just see that part. I'll put that up on my second channel so you can go and check that out because um, I think there's some interesting things that were said. And John, what a lovely man. Um, and some great hot sauces. Go check out his site, atxhotsauce.com. And also, don't forget my site, chilichump.com <laughs> forward slash shop. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you again very soon uh, in a month's time. But also, there'll be some videos before then. So, until then, stay spicy.